like for example, you have a, have the word minister in, yeah. in German, but a woman that takes that position will be a minister in. Ah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Lehrer, which is a teacher, mm. Lehrerin. Mm-hmm. Schauspieler, being an actor, Schauspielerin. So you make an exception yeah. for the... Mm-hmm. You always add an I-N when, mm. when a, a woman is there. Oh, that's and uh, so that makes German much more, but that is not done in Icelandic. Mm, mm. And we have this very difficult word for a minister, which is uh, Rauf Herra. Herra means mister. Mm, or, mm-hmm. or, a, or a Herr, you know, like mm, the German word mm-hmm. Herr, master really. Mm. Uh, Rauf is the one that decides. Mm, so mm. the word actually means a master that decides. Now that is impossible to have that as a as a feministic word or a feminine word. It's impossible. Mm. Would you have madam that makes the decisions or Frau mm. or Mrs. Decision making decision miss Mrs. you know, it's just ridiculous. And so I mean we spent quite a lot of time in the women's list trying to find the word. And we came up with uh, Decision making wo- or, or, or woman that decides, just saying woman. Uh, but that in the Icelandic uh, meaning of the word, the word was uh, housekeepers. Ah, interesting. Uh, not, not the ones that came next to the woman of the house, the lady of the house, would have keys and, you know, usually if, if, the, if uh, the wife died, the man would have a housekeeper. Mm. So we said no, uh, and the men went, oh, you can't have, have, have that, that is, you know, that used to be, uh, that was in the old farming society when they had housekeepers, and we said, yeah, isn't that fine? Mm. Those women really run the farm, <laughs> yeah, it's and true. that's what, you know, Raul Herrar are doing, <laughs> so it's just fine. But they thought it was very, yeah. it's funny. <laughs> but there are lots of things that like that that you have to think about. Mm-hmm. But like, like this is some big decisions no, not that I remember sort of off hand because, like I say, it is a process. It's mm. not like you. It's not like a revelation, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. You That's a super interesting. And in in English, we do have that similar thing. In de- so, for example, the U.S. Declaration of Independence, it says all men are created equal. Exactly. And so that, you know, and then the what feminist that, critique of that. Yeah, is that, exactly, exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that is literally should be, true should be yeah document. should be changed to mm-hmm. human beings or all humans mm-hmm. or men mm-hmm. and women or a critique that yes in the time they were talking about they were only talking about men i know i know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just a just a small group of men yeah. even property white men yeah, yeah. exactly mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. what they that's again uh, so interesting how it's always through history been taken as granted that you just name your group, and that is called democracy. Mm-hmm, it's like mm-hmm. the Greeks, I mean, who could vote in Greek? Who yeah. could vote in, in old, old Icelandic parliament? Mm-hmm. It was just a small number of, of property owners. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So then eventually the the men and other people in the assembly got over the feeling that it was ugly and not a good... Well, term. you know, it was agreed, because they didn't have any arguments when mm-hmm. it came to, you know... Especially the Bible. The Bible. Yeah, yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> we really laughed when, he, when we... When we so I can't remember who thought of that. I mean, probably the, uh, there was one, one priest or theologian Look, in, in the, and I knew about it, and she knew about it, and I don't know what others had followed that process. Mm. But uh, that was very interesting, because that really... You know, they didn't have any, any tools left, but they were really grumpy about it. Mm. It's ugly and it goes against the Icelandic, the traditional use of the beautiful Icelandic <laughs> language. And, all that. and I'm not saying, I mean, it hasn't really changed in the way that, but it has, because the constitution has not been agreed on. Mm. But it would really force, for example, all of, official papers or whatever, you know, mm. to take notice of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there's a wonderful argument that is just a joke, mm. you know, because we called ourselves Parliament women. We ah. did not call ourselves Parliament men. Oh, interesting. I mean, in Iceland, mm. because you have this word parliamentarian, mm. but we have think, mm-hmm. you know, uh, think, we all think, mm. think men, mm. think, which is used for think men and women. Uh-huh. So we said, think women. That irritated some of them so much that they could not, you know, they would 
make it an issue again again and again you know for years and years and years and it would be ridiculing trying to make them you know and it just irritated them so much <laughs> and then once one of the uh, 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 one of the parliamentarians that was really upset about mm. it because he was very concerned about the Icelandic language you know, <laughs> and man is a woman man is a woman a woman is a man you know. and he and one of the uh, one of the the, the uh, women from the women's list they were just standing by a window overlooking mm. you know the square in front of the parliament just sort of chatting or something and there's this statue of the Icelandic hero Jón mm. Sigurðsson in the middle of the square and uh, then this woman said oh look there are three men standing there by the statue of Jón Sigurðsson one is pregnant I wonder if the other two have their period <laughs> <laughs> and he blew up with anger and you know, he was so angry because of course this was ridiculous you can't say that but how can you then say man is woman and woman is man you know, if you take a sample I always love that story because mm. I thought that was a beautiful argument and this woman is a very sort of well, she she said um, she used to say such funny things but she's a very very proper girl, woman she always uh, likes she's out of what is the name? Sort of Laura, As- Laura Astley dressed, you know, little ba- band of pearls, you know, like a school teacher, uh-huh. nice little sweaters, you know. But so, but has this had this wonderful imagination, and really radical thinking, and 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 because it was always so polite and so pleasant, they had found it very difficult to handle her oh, because you. she had all sorts of. Well, I mean, she would say things like this mm. in a very nice manner. And very politely, and they would just go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But I'm not. I know I'm not being very particular about this. This, um, you know, how how a uh, big decision. No, no. Because, but but that is that is that is is the fact. Mm-hmm. I mean, a process is some is something very different to voting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I can just take an example about when we were in the in the in the on the on the constitutional committee. Yeah. A few people there discussed quite a lot about that people should be elected at random. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now this was in the year when was it? Twelve. <laughs> Two thousand twelve, wasn't it? Two thousand twelve. Uh, was the election? Yeah. yeah. Two thousand twelve. Yeah. I can. And I thought that was ridiculous. And these were these uh, ideas were also on the women's list. Mm. Then not about parliamentarians, but on several uh, on on sort of uh, major um, positions in society, mm. like the the bishop or or head of the radio or something, that they should be picked at. Well, not not the head, but s- sitting on committees for you know maybe the radio station or something, should be picked at random. And I thought that was ridiculous, and I said, things you know, like having some stupid people running the radio, you know, no way. <laughs> and then same with with these four or five in in the co- uh, constitutional committee that really went in for this idea. Mm. And I said, come on, yeah, come on, boys. And then, to my own surprise, sort of, I found myself more and more thinking about Ranto. Mm. And I have no idea when my mind changed. Uh-huh. Now I'm all for it. <laughs> and I have no idea when my ideas changed. Oh, how and why. It's just been, I mean, I've been thinking and thinking a lot about democracy. Why isn't it working? Mm. Uh, why do people in general feel they're not being represented? Who is, what kind of people are being elected to parliaments all over the world there? Mm sort of elitist in the sense that they all come from university, they're usually lawyers or economists or political scientists mm-hmm. or or something like that. And and that these thoughts have obviously, without me knowing, <laughs> gradually led me to believing in we should at least try out mm. random. Huh. That's amazing. Mm. <laughs> I love again your example, your negative example of yourself. Yeah. 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 That's uh, yeah. How about other things, other uh, feminist, other things that you think it'll be very important to remember about the process? I think that you'd want from a feminist or from any kind of perspective, from your own perspective. To well, I would not say from a feminist, you mm. know, it, uh, because that, that, 
that was not the issue there. Mm, yeah. I mean, it is it is very traditional. Mm. You know, in a, it's not a very uh, there's nothing revolutionary in that mm. that constitution. It's just very so traditional to uh. be sticking to the values of the society. We have to remember this has to represent the the will of the people in the country. Uh-huh. It's not it's not something as opposed to um, call on a revolution or mm. anything or big and social changes or anything like that. So and that was very uh, that was a conscious decision to do among yourself. Well, I mean, people uh, might have more radical. Yeah, well, I mean that is obvious. It. I mean, mm-hmm. you you can't for, force upon people a constitution that will not reflect, because the constitution is, is for the people mm-hmm. to guard the people against politicians mm-hmm. and the power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So of course it has to represent the will of the people more or less. You know, mm-hmm. there's all, no, all, never only one will, but you cannot. I mean, you cannot put in a constitution, you know, I think that, that uh, all uh, patriarchal ideas should be abundant and feministic values taken up. I mean, you, you cannot... You, <laughs> as much, how as, much, you, you as, much <laughs> as I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> and were there moments in particular where you thought, okay, this is an idea that I would want to put in, but I know that it would go against the women? Not really. Mm. I mean, so, yeah, well, sometimes they were, they, it was more like, they, they, you know, they did, when they said all, Mm. Uh, in, in this new m- meaning of everybody, mm-hmm. we, I would I would just sometimes say no. We have to say women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Women have to be you know make them visible in the sentence, mm-hmm. which you know they always thought was it's enough to say all and I, you know and I and some of them, but I did it more than anybody else. Did. No, it's not enough to say all mm-hmm. because we're so used to thinking somehow at the back of our mind that all is men. Yeah. So we have to say all men and women or all women and men mm-hmm. and uh, those sort of discussions and then just putting them in place every day because they didn't know how to behave towards mm-hmm. women like mm-hmm. you know that like they didn't remember what we said they didn't uh-huh. quote us mm-hmm. uh, um, they forgot that we had suggested something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that's just i mean history forgets women yeah. immediately mm-hmm. immediately mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were now uh, other than just I mean, this is just a part of the patriarchy. You don't include women. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they're not doing it because they're bad men. It's just like a reflect. They, there's a, I think somebody said, I think it was you actually, there's just this black hole in their mind. Mm-hmm. They don't remember. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, every day I went to some man there and said, you know, you really can't say that. Mm-hmm. And do you, do, do you, do you realize how, you know, the way you spoke and the way you forgot me when you, you know, me, I say, you know, yeah, but yeah. somebody mm-hmm. else. And um, and then I would say, to them, which would irritate. Well, some of them had the humor, others didn't. I mean, the younger ones have less humor, of course. Oh, oh you think? Yeah. Oh, younger men are so much. Uh, well, that's another int- interesting thing about the mother and the son. Mm. But uh, and I used to say, and I used to say, come on, you know, because I am at the age now mm. that you have no sexual interest in me whatsoever. Mm. I can say whatever I like. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them, especially the old men, would laugh and say, yes, yes, that's right, you know, but the old men, the middle age one. But then uh, again, there were some of the guys that about between 40 and 50 that I was in really good relationship with. Mm. And, and they all said, they said, you know, they had learned so much from me. But some were defensive, but like, you know, like anyway, you know, mm. I don't blame them. <laughs> and the more successful they are, the more they are on guard mm. towards women. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's super interesting, yeah. So this goes beyond, this is beyond the uh, constitution, the, uh, the yeah, but constitution I have, writing process, but I'm interested just in general. Yeah, like I, you, I, can't, you know, you? I can't really say anything very much sort of from a feminist point of view of the Constitution, because it's not the feministic. Yeah. So on that, what would you, what would you like to, what would be a feminist constitution in your sense? Or is that even a thing, a feminist constitution? Well, I don't Could know. Could that be? I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a hard question, huh? I mean, what is a, I mean, everything that we say and do and every, all our values or the society's values mm-hmm. are patriarchic ideas, but it's very difficult to put down on paper what they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can just see that they, you know, uh, they have, uh, patriarchy has some pillars like religion, mm-hmm. violence, mm-hmm. and uh, political power, mm-hmm. 
money, you know, mm -hmm. capitalism. Mm -hmm. Those are all pillars of, of, of patriarchy, but it's very, but we tend to think they're there because that's human nature. Yeah. Now we could, uh, how you put that down, down in writing and make it feministic is very difficult to, because that, that is a state of mind really. Mm -hmm. and, and, and values, not so hard facts. But it would be interesting to sit down. We had this idea in the women's list a uh, long time ago uh, when when the Icelandic Parliament was probably oh there were some anniversaries, you know, cannot have been the eleven hundred years of of uh, since settlement officially. Of course, there was settlement settlement before. Mm. Um, I can't remember one of these dates that are very important. In, <laughs> I, I should be more exact now. Um, and we thought that wouldn't it be a wonderful idea to call together an international women's parliament mm. to sit in Thingvellir, yeah, mm -hmm. where the old parliament used to mm -hmm. sit, and asking women to prepare their their coming to Iceland very well and. Inter an international group of, of women would write international laws from a feministic uh, point of view. I mean, that would have been wonderful. We can do that? Yeah, well, that is very, very expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. very expensive. That's true, that's true. And after the, uh, when, when we had this idea, and we really worked on it, we worked on it with the women from the other parties as well, because that is one of the strengths of Icelandic women, mm -hmm. that they have managed to work across party lines. Mm -hmm. And um, and the Prime Minister of Iceland, at that time, he was interested. Mm. But then, I can't remember whether whether you know there was elections or something. Anyway, we didn't get the money, mm. um, so we couldn't do it. But Mary Robertson in Ireland did mm. a sort of a small shadow shadowy version of mm. it, meaning well, but not with this on this grand scale. Not with not with this sort of. Uh, because the, the, I mean, after all, the Icelandic Parliament is the oldest Parliament working yeah. mm -hmm. in the world. Of course, there had been exactly the same kind of small parliaments in different region, regions of of Norway mm. and maybe in Sweden. So this was, you know, we were just imitating what we're doing. There. But then there, the king t took over, united, and all these parliaments were thrown out. So we are the the oldest that is active. And so it would be very, very symbolic to mm. go back to Thingvellir yes. and do it there. Uh -huh, I think that, so would too. Be, that would be, really be the cradle of <laughs> democracy, more <laughs> so than the Greeks, because they, they, they didn't have a parliament for centuries and centuries. That gives me goosebumps. I think that's a wonderful idea. It is idea. a wonderful idea. Mm. It is a wonderful idea. There are so many good ideas, but it's... Well, everything costs money, and it's difficult to raise money for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it needs a lot of time and... and Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. anyway didn't happen alas yet yeah it might happen one day yeah i think so too <clears throat> and interesting to think like about the internet making things some of that possible i mean there's lots of things that make, makes it impossible too but you know you could internet's think. like you know somehow it's it's like everything mm -hmm like everything mm. and I'll quote UNESCO again mm -hmm. not just bad and, bad and good but some yeah. third as well somehow the internet can can work as a sort of uh, where you sort of get rid of some pressure mm. you write something on Facebook and, mm -hmm. and you feel afterwards that you've done something to release your anger or, or, or whatever you know mm. uh, and you don't meet other people to do it. You just put it there, and it's you know. But then again, it can be a wonderful thing to mm. connect people and and spread ideas, you know. But it's because we know that nothing, 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 and thank God, nothing comes instead of meeting human beings and That's talking so eye to eye. I mean, no wonderful communication system is better than that. It's so true, especially yeah. to especially when the process is consensus building yeah. and things because yeah. yeah. just as you say you don't even know it's happening no. while it's happening exactly mm -hmm. <gasps> it's, i think that's a wonderful it idea. is so good 
I thought you were talking about. I thought oh, you were saying this was wonderful. Oh, this is wonderful, yeah, wonderful too. <laughs> I had yeah. This is like the combined wonderful no. face to face mm. and deliciousness. <clears throat> well, I think this is a fantastic start, and so I'll end this. Oh, we can keep. Is there anything else you'd want us to? No, I just. About? I think it's you know I, I no it's it's difficult to connect it to the constitution. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there are lots of things I would, yeah. Lots mm-hmm. of things I would, I would, I could add about sort of all sorts of feminism, mm. and uh, uh, yeah, no, no. I, for the, with this random thing, I'm very taken up with now. I was giving a speech the other day at the, at, the, at a conference, and oh, yeah. I suddenly found myself talking about random. Not suddenly, but mm. but it was then that I realized I'm really convinced now that we should try <laughs> something like that. Mm. Because at least that would see if you, I mean, you, you do it as an opinion poll, you take mm-hmm. a right proportion of sex and AIDS and, and uh, where you live and that sort of thing, it would ensure equal representation of the sexes, mm-hmm. uh, a natural sort of AIDS span, mm-hmm. as, as now, as in most countries now, older people are excluded from everything. Mm-hmm. If you have, you know, over 50, you're not fit for anything mm-hmm. when you have all the experience and knowledge. And everybody goes, oh, we have to have young people, we have to have young people. Mm-hmm. Young people are useless <laughs> in Parliament. <laughs> Honestly, uh, no, I'm being, I mean, I've been there myself. I was 37 mm-hmm. years old, mm-hmm. I think, when I went in there, something like that. Mm. Uh, I was too young. Mm-hmm. I realized later. Mm, interesting. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, in Parliament, you may have to have to. You have to think about the whole society, mm. all spheres of, of, of society, all issues. And when you're young, you have a very limited experience, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. You only had 25 years to gather experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe you've just been to school. That's your only, uh, maybe when you gone to a doctor for, mm-hmm. with a corn on your foot or something. Mm-hmm. Or have you have your tonsils taken out? <laughs> for most people. No, no I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. saying this because I'm against young people. No, but no, because, yeah. But it, of course it can be, I mean, they should be represented as well. Mm-hmm. But let's not all sort of stoop to the idea that, you know, renewing everybody in Parliament is very important to get in the young people. Because they're usually more conservative too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because old people, you know, young people are so, <coughs> well, this is my theory, uh, are so busy with creating themselves as a person, mm-hmm. which takes a long time. And of course, you never finish it. But you, you know, you, we all know when we reach a certain date, we have reached some sort of a agreement with ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, we have mm-hmm. accepted ourselves. That's the way I am. And I might try to be, a, you know, nicer person than I am or something, you know, or work hard or whatever. But you have more or less created your sort of personality or your character. Now, while you're doing that, you you don't really have space for more than one idea at a time. Mm. That's why it's so easy to polarize young people, mm-hmm. you know, like we had in the Cold War, you know, the, you were either a communist or a capitalist, uh, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and that's why they send young people to war, because it's so easy to convince them that they're, they're you know, doing something useful and heroic. Oh, well, that's interesting, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, older men would just say, no, you know, it's stupid, I'm not going. <laughs> no, honestly, you know what I mean? Yeah, very much They're so, so easy, easy to influence mm-hmm. young people, and that is very natural. But then, <coughs> and it takes, that's why I say, you know, we shouldn't have, have we shouldn't sort of concentrate on just one young people in the, in the, in the pound, because it is a difficult job, it's a complicated job. Mm takes time to learn it. But I think, you know, if we had this right, spread out, mm-hmm. random picked people from all, all, you know, all classes mm-hmm. and sex and mm-hmm. all sexes, you have to say all sexes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And from, uh, that would represent the people of the country. I think so too. And then it would also, the very ways that expertise that race, class and Sex, everything gets masked as expertise. It exactly. Unmask exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, of course, I mean, like parliamentarians do now, I mean, they have all sorts of specialists that they can ask and have mm. advice from. But my experience from the women's list convinced me that people, they shoulder responsibility when they're given it. Mm-hmm. You can always say there is somebody stupid that doesn't, but you know, 
so be it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They are, have the right to live as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Alas. <laughs> <laughs> Should be allowed to vote. <laughs> no, but, uh, but our experience in, in the women's list, but hundreds of women came mm. to work with us. And I mean to work, to work, to write the, write the agenda and work out, you know, uh, what we should do on all issues. Mm. Most of them had never been involved at all in mm. politics. And what did we do? We read, we spoke, we gathered information, we discussed, and in the end we wrote this wonderful, the best agenda you've ever seen from a political party in Iceland. Oh, how we wonderful. Had, we had some, we had, had made sort of, uh, what's it called? Where to go? A step now, what do you call it? Or the politics yeah, yeah, that yeah. you have in the fishing industry uh-huh. or, you know, or, or, or traffic and whatever. Mm. In every issue. And we could always go back to this brochure that we had because it was always there. Oh, that's excellent. So we did not have to go, ooh, 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 what am I supposed to think about this? Let's just go there. Okay. <laughs> well, some people might say that was like Mao's little red book, no. but this was the work of hundreds of women. That's amazing. Not being specialists. Mm. I mean, of course, there were specialists in many. We had lawyers and doctors and teachers and God knows and artists and God knows what. But you know, they were not writing as as specialists. You know, we we were, t- we were taking a stand on all issues of society. That's wonderful. And what what is that document? Is that is that? Could... Yeah, it still exists, of course. Yeah. No. It's all now in the museum. We oh, walk on. We walk on to a museum. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I totally so, agree with you. So I think because we really have to think, why are these terrible things happening? Mm. And now I'm just talking about the Western world. I don't mm. know the rest of the world well enough to. And there's such a different culture, and that you know, I'm not passing a judgment on, on China or, or India or. Africa or something, I might think something, you know, about horrible things happening there, but I don't understand the cost, the, the culture. Mm-hmm. But in Western democracy, democracy, horrible things are happening. Yeah, oh my gosh. Trump. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, not only the, the sort of more, not only these sort of fascistic political groups, mm-hmm. which are very dangerous. Yeah. Mm. But also the 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 uh, what do you call it uh, the wealth of the world is gathering more and more on a few people's hands, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a, you know there's a, a wider and wider gap between the ordinary man and rich people. Mm-hmm. All sorts of things. That, uh, this has happened, or maybe not because of the democracy, but in spite of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And what, and what what was very obvious, for example, in the in the elections in uh, presidential election in, in in the states, that Hillary Clinton, of course, being slandered like hell because she's a woman, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying she's a saint; she's yeah. obviously a part of the of the clique and elite yeah. and all that, mm-hmm. you know. But whatever opinion you have of her, you know, the way she is was slandered is, of course, scandalous. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how this woman can. Why she's alive after all this. Anyway, people were obviously so obsessed with not voting for what there is. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not for for thinking that Trump for something else. Mm. Which of course he isn't. I mean, he's a rich man. He's a, you know, the difference between him and and somebody else is that he he seems to be stupid. Mm. No, but the thing is, you know, he said, I'll give up, you know, I'll give you your jobs back, I'll give you America back, you know, America great again. Mm-hmm. And he gave these people the feeling of, I'm going to think of you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and and, it, and uh, because people have lost faith in, in Europe too, people have lost faith in democracy. More and more people don't go and vote. Mm-hmm. They say, oh, there's, you know, it doesn't matter where you put your... You know, they're all the same anyway, mm. which is not right. But this is what you know, what mm-hmm, sort of mm-hmm. the general feeling. And so we really seriously have to think 
of different ways. That mm. is very, very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Extremely. And that's why I think now the, the our constitution, the bill is in the electoral system is terribly conservative. Mm. Oh, interesting. I think mm -hmm. so. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to express that opinion because, you know, that would be disloyal. But that was, it was done actually by specialists. The, 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 the man that is the specialist in electoral system and was always on television explaining, you know, and writing the, the percentage and mm. how many <laughs> parliamentarians would then, you know. Oh, political. And, and he <laughs> had some you know, deep knowledge of the matter, but obviously he as a mathematician was also, for my, <laughs> my taste, making it far too complicated. Mm, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it will never be agreed on. But mm. there are ideas in it that are right, all right. There's uh, things like uh, everybody should have at least two votes, so mm -hmm. that you could vote for individuals and you could vote for parties, or you could vote for two individuals, or, to, you know, all sorts of... It gives a bit more of a variety than the, the present system. Oh, that's very interesting. It is interesting, but, you know, I think now even, I mean, it's, all, it's all, already... What is it? Twelve, five, six years, you know, and it's become old-fashioned. I think. Mm. It's, I mean, because these sort of extremes or these weaknesses in democracy were not as obvious then as they are now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's very true. Like we are in a much different moment right now. Much, and and at this conference <clears throat> where I was giving this speech, uh, probably two weeks ago now. Um, I presented this idea, and then, of course, some of the women, especially the left women, were saying, oh, we'll, oh, this is, you know, this will, we'll have much more of conservative people in Parliament. Now, who says? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do they say that? I mean, 25% of the people that I said vote for the Conservative Party, 25 uh, vote for other Conservative Parties, and the rest 50 for the rest of the Conservative Parties. <laughs> 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 because I think you know, I think they're all they're all very conservatives because they're behind the time. They don't they don't they're not following the time. Mm. They're they're all working on uh, with political methods and thoughts that were valid sixty years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are behind society. I think. Yeah, I think that's so. You know, that's and politics in general point. is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, who is to say that random? Because I think that very many people, if they suddenly were there in Parliament, they would be very surprised what they, when they started really looking into issues and having opinions and yeah. and and getting help and information, they would be surprised what they you know because of course people are conservative. Mm -hmm. That is very natural to be conservative because that means things don't change even though they're bad. Mm -hmm. You don't know what changes would bring, you know. Yeah. It's, we must be realistic in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, that, that what do... Every man just wants to live in peace. And uh, so if you, if you go down to basics, you know, oh, have a family and live in peace, you know. <laughs> and, and why risk that? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm you know, not talking about everybody sitting there, you know, passive. And, but... Uh, but people are not very keen on changes because they don't know what they bring. But also, I mean, we have, uh, last centuries, we saw two horrible wars fought. Mm -hmm. For what? For what? Yeah. Didn't really change anything, mm -hmm. except move borders a bit back and forth and, and, uh, and uh, you know, it just changed more or less just to... Uh, just millions of lives lost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we had revolution in, in, in Russia. Of course that changed a lot of things. Of course the revolution changed a lot of things. They would have changed anyway. Maybe a bit slower. Uh, and we have this terrible rising of capitalism and sort of ne ne neoliberalism, whatever it's mm -hmm, called. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these great big ideas and, the, and these idealistic ideas that we're supposed to fight for, they haven't brought anything. So, of course, what is the lesson to be learned? Sit at home and don't, you know, don't be a fool. Don't mm. take a part in revolution. Don't take part in wars, you know. Mm. Don't support any extreme ideas or ideology. And that is one of the big lies of patriarchy 
that there is an ideology that can span everything. Yeah. That is just mm-hmm. an, that is just nonsense. Mm-hmm. And like, then a hero that can exactly, represent. Yeah. yeah. That's just yeah. nonsense. Like there is there is never just one solution. Like if you talk about the health system, for example, either this or that. Mm. So or the or the welfare system. Mm-hmm. There is no no system that suits everybody. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. And you have to have a sort of flexibility and more possibilities, and the same in politics and 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 in, and in values, you know. So, what I'm trying to say is that we, I think, the elite, especially mm. of the left, they so easily despise people. Yeah, that's a ch- They're so stupid. They vote yeah. for Trump because they're so stupid. Are they necessarily stupid, or mm. do they have, you know, a different way of life that leads them to a different way of thinking, or less education, or less opportunity, whatever, you know? Mm. Let's not just always say that everyone that's conservative or is stupid and ridiculous. Yeah, I totally agree that that <laughs> mode of approaching other people, yeah. politically and also humanly, mm. is not good. No. Yeah. No, anyway. Mm-hmm. You want and randomness, not that it's the be-all and end-all, also moves against that, too, in a way. Yeah. You know, because it it implies a basic trust. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think we'll see that in the next hundred years, but we we'll probably see fascism and and wars before we come, or will we come to our senses? We've had mm-hmm. wars through the centuries mm-hmm. and don't seem to come to any senses. Yeah, fingers crossed, huh? Yeah, it's terrible, really. I mean, now when we can all see war on, mm. you know, in our living rooms, and see all these, you know, these poor fugitives from Africa drowning in the med- Mediterranean, you know, yeah. Yeah. why don't we learn? Why don't we learn? That is. And what's the pull towards it, like, on college campuses in the U.S. right now? <gasps> the fascists yeah, yeah. are strong, and yeah. then the anti-fascists, yeah. it's, it's, it's violent now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, the, the, what is also frightening, I think, is that there are so many decisions that have to be made in the world mm-hmm. if we are going to live. Yeah. Uh, urgent, yeah. Very mm-hmm. urgent uh, questions that have to be attack issues that have to be attacked mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and sorry to say I think some of the decisions that have to be made or you know mankind will, will disappear which is not maybe a great loss then the planet can start recovering mm-hmm. and live in peace from human beings yeah. mm-hmm. but if we are going to live we have to there are so many drastic changes that have to be made that like I said, it frightens me, but I'm afraid it won't be done without fascistic methods. Oh, interesting. Mm. Because there will have there will have to be decisions made that people will never agree on mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. it goes against their daily comfort or something. Yeah. And uh, so many things will have to be forbidden or, you know, you. I'm I, I'm just thinking. I'm I've been reading quite a lot of Margaret Atwood. And her books are so interesting. Your handmade the Handmaid's Tale uh, yeah. became very mm-hmm. fashionable. Mm-hmm. Not only in 1984, Handmaid's Tale is a much better book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she's, it's by a woman, of course. <laughs> and she has written quite a few books that, 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 that take place in a, some kind of terrible fascist future society. Mm. It's very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, let's hope we find some other ways, but, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, I have this bit of a frightening thought that it will lead to more fascism. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, let's work for some yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. of course one must mm-hmm. not sit down and think, well, it's going to end in fascism <laughs> anyway, so, you know. Yeah, no, I know what you mean, though. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, yeah. huh? And uh, hopefully this can be just the start of a longer, of, yeah. a, of, ma- of I mean, many, many part conversations.